Hey, what's up everyone? Today I wanted to talk about update cursors. Now, before we were working with search cursors, and if you remember, search cursors allowed us to go through the attribute table uh, field by field and just look at that data, um, view the data, look at it, maybe use that information to do some other process like um, before we used the FID to make a selection from that FID, but we didn't actually change that data or manipulate that data. Um, with an update cursor, we can change all these values to whatever we want. We can um, give it conditionals, so we could say if if the field is empty, like this one, update it with something else, or if if it's a certain number, if it's zero, update it with something. Um, so in this example, we're just going to update this name par field. Um, you can see this name alt, that used to be empty, but right before I started this video, I just updated it with this new value, updated one. Um, so this update cursor can come in handy if you need to update a lot of fields. Um, so let's get started. Uh, I'm just going to clear all this out and basically just start from scratch. So we just have our import arcpy statement and that points variable pointing to the populated places shapefile. Um, so let's just go ahead and start building that update cursor. So with arcpy.da. Instead of search cursor, it's just update cursor. Our parameters are so the first one is what do we want to look through, and it's the points variable. And then what field are we interested in? Put that in the square brackets. And we saw that one field was empty, name par, so we'll just use that. Alright, name par. And then we construct the search cursor, just give it a name, so as, uh, let's call it city cursor. Alright, 4x in city cursor, what do you want to do? Why don't we just print x0 right now? So, since there's nothing here, it should just print out, it should print nothing out, so let's just check. Alright, so now what we're trying to do is update the value of this x0. And to do that, all we need to do is set this equal to something else. So we're going to change this value to something else. So right now it's nothing. Now we'll say if, or we'll just set it equal to some other string. So we can say we just updated this. Okay? And we're almost done. There's only one more thing that an update cursor requires. And let's just go to the, the site to look at the syntax of it. So you'll notice down here, okay, here we go, this update row method. That's what we need to use. So usually on these, on these um, websites, or on this website, on these examples, they have code examples, which is really helpful. So this is the little piece that we need here, cursor.updateRow. All right, we can just throw that in. <clears throat> um, instead of cursor, we call it ours, city cursor. So dot update row, and instead of row, we used x. All right, now that should do it, but why don't we just add a print statement in as well and just say we updated this value to we'll just use those formatters again. Uh, what do we update it to? We updated it to x0. Alright, let's give that a whirl. Alright, looks like it worked. Let's go take a look at it in arc. Um, gonna have to remove this, refresh this, and then drag it back in. Populated places. All right, and you can see now that that name par was updated. So that's the basics of how an update cursor works. In the next few tutorials, I think I'll make them. So we just updated one by hand, 
maybe we could update every single one or update it based on some condition. So, uh, alright, see you guys later.